Hi there, and welcome to Dili East Timor. Now, there's a sentence that three years ago, I would have never guessed I'd be saying on the internet. So, you know that we're in the middle of my current Roots and Hub series, based on the original Kangaroo Root. And so, you may be asking, well, then why the heck are you in East Timor? For a bit of romance, I wanted to leave Darwin as classically as possible. So that meant flying on Air North on an E-120 to where I am now. Before we actually head into the airport, I do think a little bit of perspective and context would be useful here. East Timor is a small country in the southeast of Southeast Asia, and they've just recently become a member of ASEAN in principle at least. They share the island of Timor with Indonesia. Fun fact, Timor comes from a Malay word which means east. So right now, I am in East East in the southeast of Southeast Asia. The country is a bit bigger than the Bahamas and Montenegro, and smaller than Fiji or Kuwait. And if you don't know anything about the country, then the next fact might catch you off guard. The primary language is Portuguese. Before we get into this any further, let me introduce myself. I'm Kevin the Flip Flop Traveler. If I want you to know one thing, it's that the opinions in my videos are honest and my own. If you'd like to know more about the what, how, and why I do what I do, scan the QR code to read more. Have a look around the channel. There are hundreds of flight and hotel reviews to watch. This island hopper begins now. I was a little bit of a VIP when transiting here, I'm not gonna lie. The only thing I received though were smiles and confusion. I can't tell you how many times I heard Transito, Fidaji, which roughly translates to, what is this? You are telling me that rather than flying from Darwin to Bali, you decided to spend three times as much and stop here in Dili just so that you could fly on an old turboprop and a low cost airline? That's madness, but you're welcome. Small problem, I was here for six hours. There's no Wi-Fi. The currency in East Timor is actually the US dollar but they couldn't break a $5 bill. So I used my very rough Portuguese to ask if I could just sit in this cafe for five hours, which was happily allowed. Great since the airport itself closes in between flights. Around 90 minutes before departure, the departures area actually opened up. Now, I've never been to Cuba and I wasn't alive in the 60s, but these wooden writing tables instantly made me think that I was in some period movie flying out of Cuba. I don't know why. Feel free to tell me in the comments how far off I am. For carry-ons, we had a human scale. As in, a guy picked up my bag and gave me a gloomy look. I gave a thumbs up and said, okay. He picked it up again. E um pouco passado. Check it it was. Immigration took around 20 minutes to get the computers running. And I got my final transito, verdade, of the day from the very friendly immigration officer. And here we are in the waiting area, which was air-conditioned and comfortable enough. The restrooms did leave a little bit to be desired, though. It was at this point that I was well aware of the fact that there was no sink or sanitizer on the flight prior, either. I was also starving since I couldn't buy anything for breakfast or lunch. I do travel with a SIM card that has data in every country, but apparently not here. Though the country has around 1.2 million inhabitants, the primary airport here in Dili handles just 3.85 flights per day on average. I wanted to be as generous as I could with that one. With only two international destinations, Darwin and Denpasar. Wouldn't you know, I came from one and I'm going to the other. So, CityLink. It's a very short story, frankly. They were created by Garuda Indonesia in 2001 with a pair of Fokkers. F-28 Fellowship Fokkers, I mean. Meant to be their low-cost arm, they originally flew from Jakarta and Surabaya to destinations not served by Garuda. In 2012, they had a major brand overhaul and became a truly separate airline. Unlike their scandalous parent airline, CityLink prefers to be in the drama-free zone. They currently fly to eight international and 45 domestic destinations on their 58 aircraft, with a further 37 on order. In 2019, East Timor had 81,000 total visitors, which is just about one of these CityLink A320s per day. 
so each flight in and out is quite an event and very important for the country. I used my internal Avdar to help me catch our bird landing, since of course I had no access to flight radar and the like. Boarding was called, and I finally realized why this flight was so expensive, relatively speaking. My guess is that it's meant to be the primary link between these two countries, rather than a route that actually makes money. So, everyone pays for that privilege to be on this plane. It was a gorgeous day to board a plane and fly, though. Here's today's trip stats. When I originally booked this flight, for some reason I imagined, oh, it's such a popular route, let's make sure I get a first row seat. Especially since the standard pitch on CityLink is a bone-crushing 28 inches. Even with just 15 or so passengers on board, it was still a good call. The seats themselves were on the comfortable end of a standard low-cost seat, and the legroom was more than adequate. Enjoying the video? If you are, give the video a like. Go ahead. You know where it is. Yeah, just right up. Yeah, okay. Clicking that itsy bitsy thumbs up button will do precisely one thing. Ensure more people see this video. And it's free for you. If you prefer payment though, who am I to argue? My Patreon is also linked in the description. Thanks very much. We closed the door a good 15 minutes early and the safety demonstration began. As we taxi, let me just quickly mention that everything that I said about East Timor is not meant to be criticism. It's in a category of it is what it is and provides rounding for the video. I've lived in developing countries for over half of my adult life, so I get it. No two countries' trajectories are the same. That and the fact that I don't want anyone here to um, publish anything of mine like they may or may not have allegedly done previously to someone else allegedly flying on their national airline, which I'm sure is absolutely wonderful. Okay, let's get in the air. The spool up, takeoff, and airport stats are coming up. Soon after we got in the air, I had a look at the onboard menu. Remember, I was starving by this time. Took me a few minutes to decide, but I wanted the Nasi Rendang City Link. I'll literally eat anything with the word Rendang in it.
I had my 60,000 rupiah in my hand as the meal service started. Then I was handed this. I asked about the menu items. Ah, uh, sorry, today we don't have a... For a flight turn with very few passengers, I can understand just having one choice. And I suppose for international flights, it's inclusive. The only thing I can't really wrap my brain around, though, is how am I being served a carbonara on a flight from Dili to Denpasar? And no less a carbonara with pork bacon on an Indonesian airline. It was all just very confusing to me, so I did the only thing that felt right. I doused it in three packets of hot sauce and inhaled it. One of my ideas for next year is to do a trip entirely consisting of islands, for the hotels, but also just for these views. Bathrooms on board were basic as, but clean. If you'd like to follow along with my Roots and Hub series, retracing the original kangaroo route from the 1920s, I'd suggest watching my intro video if you haven't already, or checking out my playlist for the series via the QR code or links in the description. Soon enough, the gorgeous cliffs of Panita Island came into view, our cue for landing time. I'll let you enjoy it, the airport stats are coming up. So, a bit expensive for the flight, but at least I caught up on my five hours of Netflix in my private cafe. And I mean, now I'm in Bali. Poor me. 
things could be worse. So that'll do it for today. I really do hope that you enjoyed this trip report. If you did, please be sure to click the like button and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss out on my twice weekly content. I'll see you next time on Super Airjet. Oh, and as always, thanks for watching until the end.